I'm Nate Savage and welcome to the seven minute legato workout. This is gonna be a great lesson for you if you're just getting into doing hammer-ons and pull-offs on the guitar or if you've been doing it for a while but you just need to build your strength, dexterity, and speed for these. Hammer-ons and pull-offs can provide you with a smoother, more violin-like sound in your playing but they can also require a little bit more strength and coordination to pull off properly. So in this lesson, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to start developing this in your playing. First off, we're gonna go through some basic techniques so everybody's kind of on the same page and has a good solid foundation for hammer-ons and pull-offs. After that, we're gonna apply everything that we've talked about to actually playing through the blues scale doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. And at the end of the lesson, I have a jam track for you so you can actually apply what we've been working on to some real music. Let's get into some basic technique for doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now, the jam track that I have for you is gonna be in the key of A blues, so let's stick to kind of an A blues or A minor pentatonic scale shape. And let's get started with some hammer-ons. First of all, put your index finger on the fifth fret of the D string, just to start out. And pick that note. And to do a hammer-on, all you're basically gonna do is come down on the seventh fret of that D string with your third finger. Notice that most of the motion is coming from my big knuckle right there. And the idea is to come down on that note that's already ringing out that you picked back here with your fretting with your first finger. Come down on that note hard enough to make it similar in volume to the note that you just picked. And really it's more about how fast or how much velocity you come down on that note with, not how hard you come down on that note. If you come down on it not hard enough, it's just gonna mute the string. If you come down on it, on it too hard, it's gonna make the note go sharp. So, like I said, it's more about how quickly, or how much velocity you put into that note. And by that, I don't mean how soon after you pick that initial note. I just mean how fast you come down on it, right? So play around with that. Pick that first note, then hammer on to the next note. Try to make them sound as even and close to each other in volume as possible. Another tip here that I want to give you is to keep your emotions as small and efficient as possible. When I'm doing hammer-ons like this, my finger isn't even a half inch above that string. And when you start playing faster stuff, if you keep your fingers close to the strings, that can help you out a lot in the future. So tr try to keep your emotions really efficient and small. Now let's move on to some pull-offs, the other half of the equation for legato. Put your third finger on that seventh fret of the D string and your index finger back on the fifth fret. Have them both there at the same time. And what you're gonna do is pick that note that you're holding down on the seventh fret with your third finger. And right after you pick it, you're gonna kind of pluck that same string with your third finger and pull off, right? And when you do that, the note you're holding down with your first finger should ring out there on the fifth fret. So try that over and over again pluck down and out. It's almost just like you're picking the string with your third finger, right? Doing that pull off. And again, the idea here is to have both notes, the pick note and the pulled off note, similar in volume. And one thing that I see a lot of newer players do here is when they do a pull off, sometimes they just lift up. And you can't really do that Otherwise, the volume between the two notes won't be the same, or you may not get anything out of it. If you, especially if you do it slowly, remember how I said it's all about the velocity or how quickly you do it. If you do it slowly, the note disappears. And you kind of pull off to pluck it. Once you have the basics of hammer-ons and pull-offs down, you can put them together to do what we call a trill. And that's basically when you just string hammer-ons and pull-offs together over and over again. So. Pick that first note on the fifth fret of the D string with your index finger, hammer on, and then pull off. Then you can hammer on again and pull off again without picking at all. So make sure you leave your index finger where it, where it is on that fret, and the only note you're picking is that first note. Now that we've covered some basic technique for hammer-ons and pull-offs, what I'm gonna do is show you a couple of exercises that you can use to work on your legato technique and strengthen your fingers upright. They both use trills, once a little bit more for beginners and the other ones for a little more, more intermediate or advanced players. So basically what we're gonna do is pick any string you want. I'm gonna pick 
go back here to the fifth fret of the D string again and put my index finger there. I'm gonna pick that note, then hammer on to the sixth fret with my middle finger, and then pull off. And just trill between those two notes over and over again. So pick the first note, then just hammer on and pull off. You can do this for a few seconds, for a few measures, it's really up to you. But the basic idea is to get used to doing hammer-ons and pull-offs between those two fingers. Once you do that for a bit, you can switch to your first and third fingers and do the exact same thing. So you have these two fingers, switch to your first and third fingers. And again, do that for a few measures, and then you can switch from your, those two fingers to your first and fourth fingers too, so. First and fourth. From there you can go to the next finger pair, which would be your middle finger and your third finger. And just trill between those two notes. Try to keep the volume between the two notes as even as possible and try to keep the surrounding strings quiet too. After that, you can switch to your second and fourth fingers and trill between those two. And finally, the last finger pair is your third and your fourth fingers. This is probably the hardest one, so. So you can put the whole thing together and it'll sound like this. And you can spend as much time as you want on each finger pair, it doesn't matter. If you want to spend more time on your third and fourth fingers because you feel that they're weak, that's totally fine. You can also do it on different strings. You can try it on your high E string. It's gonna be easier up there. And you can work your way onto any of the other strings you want to. It feels different on each string. The idea is to build up that string dexterity and coordination you're gonna to need to play through other passages using hammer-ons and pull-offs. As you go through this exercise, try to stay as relaxed as possible and try to keep the surrounding strings quiet too. You're going to want to work on your strength and dexterity and your endurance with this exercise, but you're not going to want to hurt yourself. This is a great warm-up exercise and it's the first two to three minutes of the seven minute legato workout that we were talking about. Trill exercise number two is a little bit more difficult, so if you're an intermediate or advanced player, you might want to use this one. And it's kind of the same idea. Instead of just staying on one string, we're gonna cross strings though. I'll show you what I mean. So go back to your first and second finger pairs. Play the fifth fret of your low E string and hammer on to the sixth fret. Now you're gonna go to the fifth string and do the exact same thing. Pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on. Just work your way across the strings. Picking the first note and hammering on to the second note on the way up. On the way down, you're gonna pick the first note, the highest note, and then pull off. Same thing on the next string. Just working your way down the strings. So, up. And then back down. Same idea, go to your first and third fingers and do that finger pair. Same thing, pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on. Pull off on the way down. Pick, pull off, pick, pull off. Move on to your first and fourth fingers. Hammer ons and then pull off on the way down. From there, two and three. Hammer ons, right? Pull off on the way down. Four. Same exact thing. And the last finger pair is four and three. This is the hardest one again, so. Hammer ons. Pull offs. And put the whole thing together, it'll sound like this.
So again, try to keep the surrounding strings quiet and this exercise can also be used as the first two or three minutes of your seven minute daily legato workout. Once your hand is warmed up and it's strong enough to play all these hammer-ons and pull-offs, you need to apply these hammer-ons and pull-offs to a scale. What we're gonna do in this lesson is apply it to the, an A blue scale like I talked about earlier, but for your specific situation, it can be any scale that you're working on. This is the blue scale shape that we're gonna be using. Just an A blue scale. And the basic idea, if you've never done this before, is when you're ascending up the scale, pick the first note on each string and then hammer on to any remaining notes. So the next string over, you pick the first note, hammer on to those next two notes, pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on, hammer on, pick, hammer on, pick, hammer on. And so ascending, that's what you would do. When you descend, you're gonna pick the highest note of each string and then pull off to any remaining notes. So pick, pull off, pick, pull off, pick, pull off, pull off, pick, pull off. So let me go through that for you a couple times just so you can see what it sounds like in context. For this lesson, just go through that skill until you're comfortable with playing with hammer-ons and pull-offs, right? Next, we need to apply what we've been working on to some music, so I'll have a jam track for you. As I mentioned, it's in the key of like A blues. You can use either your A blues scale or your A minor pentatonic scale to play along with this, and it's kind of a Joe Bonamassa heavy blues kind of a feel. What you're probably gonna wanna do is just spend the first half of this jam track just going over the blues scale with hammer-ons and pull-offs and getting that down. It's a four minute long jam track, so for the first two minutes, do that. The second half, you can change it up and start trying to improvise with your hammer-ons and pull-offs, either using uh, the A blues scale or the A minor pentatonic scale. Here's an example of what that might sound like. So download that jam track and try to incorporate it into your daily practice time. The idea for the seven minute legato workout is to spend two to three minutes doing one of the exercises that we went over to kind of warm up and get your hands acclimated to the guitar and build some strength and dexterity. And the other half of it, or the remaining time, what you're gonna do is pull up any jam track you want and pick any skill that applies to that or that you're working on. Spend the first little bit of, the t of that time of the, on the jam track just going over that scale shape with hammer-ons and pull-offs and then start trying to improvise for the rest of the time with that jam track. If you're consistent with this little seven minute workout, you should see some pretty good results in your playing. So try to keep it going for a couple of weeks and I'm sure your legato playing will get better. Thanks for watching this video. If you wanna see more lessons like this, let me know by either liking the video or leaving a comment below. I just launched a brand new guitar lesson series that you can get right now for free. Just go to guitarsystem.com slash free dash series and I'll see you there.